Well, hello and welcome to the first ever pilot podcast called Drunk Amazon Purchases. My name is Curtis Cottle. I'm the host and I'll be kind of taking you through um, my life, which pretty much revolves around buying things on Amazon while I've had a few cocktails. So I have a lot of hobbies. I have a lot of interests and unfortunately or fortunately, Amazon meets all of those aspects when it comes to buying things. So you have almost unlimited choices, unlimited selection, and super ease of use. So it it kind of has become a problem in uh, the fact that when I drink, I like to also buy things. But it's fun, so I don't see it as a problem. And uh, if it is, I'm going to continue on this problem, but I'm also going to share it with you guys. So uh, let's first start off. Um, I thought, you know what, I uh, I needed an office to do this or a studio to do this uh, podcast. So I said, you know what, why don't we just go ahead and buy a Tesla uh, and then we can do the podcast from the Tesla because that seems like a great studio, kind of fun. Wasn't exactly an Amazon drunk purchase, the Tesla, but it was pretty darn close. So the story goes like this. I was uh, at a fantasy football draft with some buddies and uh, I was supposed to go over to Milwaukee. And uh, I'm my wife and I, we were going to do an anniversary trip over to Milwaukee. We live in Michigan, so we were going to take, there's a little uh, cruiser, um, a ferry that you can actually drive your car on and then shoot across the, the lake, Lake Michigan. It kind of cuts some time off your trip a little bit, but it's also kind of fun. Um, and so that was the plan. But then we were going to go over there. And when we were coming back, the the ferry didn't leave at the time that we needed for our plan. So we decided to last minute pivot to Chicago. So we drive down to Chicago. It takes about three, three and a half hours to get to Chicago from here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So it's not far. Uh, so it's kind of a fun little place to go. But I realized in Michigan, we don't have any Tesla dealerships, but they have Tesla dealerships in Chicago. So we have the big three car companies here in Michigan. They're trying to keep Tesla out and uh, use their lobbying and regulations to not let them sell cars in Michigan. So we don't sell car Teslas in Michigan at this point. I assume that's going to change in the near future, but Chicago has Tesla dealerships. So I was at this draft and I just kind of said nonchalantly out loud in the draft. I said, Hey guys, I think I'm going to buy a Tesla this weekend. And basically what culminated the long and short of it is the first thing that was said is do it pussy. And then so I was pretty much binding at that point, locked in to buy a Tesla. So then the next step was to go on in and vet to see if I could even use the car. That was my first thought. So I looked and um, the first thing that I noticed was there is a lot of Tesla chargers. If you look up a Tesla supercharging app, you'll see that the United States is covered with Tesla chargers. So that was good. Uh, But then also particularly... Um, my family, my mom and my dad live up in Northern lower Michigan, uh, in an area called Gaylord. So they have a Tesla charger in Gaylord, Michigan, which is a very rural area, about 20,000 people. And, uh, so that was my biggest thing where now I can go visit home and visit my parents and still be able to, to bring my Tesla in charge. And then turns out I can pretty much bring it anywhere in the United States. Uh, I've driven out to Nebraska a couple of times. Uh, there's Tesla chargers everywhere. So the charges worked. I checked out how long you go on your battery, your battery. The one I got is actually the lowest battery and it still goes about 250 miles on one charge. And then the charge is a lot quicker than you think it is. So it takes about, uh, they do a super charge. It means it charges really fast, but that only charges super fast, like the first 60, 70% of your battery. And then it kind of slows down. Um, kind of like you're pouring a glass of water, you pour it real fast at the beginning, but then as you get to the top, you don't want to, to, flow over the glass edge. So you have to slow it down so it doesn't uh, spill. And that's kind of how the Tesla battery is. You don't fry the battery. It slows it down toward the end of the charge. So what we usually do is we'll stop a little bit more often and you only have to charge about 10, 15 minutes because you're going to get uh, more than, you know, hundred miles, 120 miles of charge uh, to get the next Tesla station. So I uh, did all the checking and vetting. And next thing you know, I have a Tesla, which is perfect because it works as a great studio to run a podcast. So not exactly an Amazon drunk purchase. Um, We'll get into that here in just a second, but I do want to show you one of my favorite things about the Tesla. Um, I'll I'll probably end up 
uh, uh, over the time, over our time of the next few episodes and probably ongoing, I'll show you some new features and, and there's a lot to it. So it's probably tough to cover in one session. So I'll show you one today and, and they always update. So there's always going to be new stuff and fun stuff that uh, you can see about the Tesla. So the first thing is I'm going to show you they created some video games. So I'm going to show you my favorite video game. We often do this drunk as well. We'll sit in my garage. Um, since it's not a combustion vehicle, there's no exhaust. You can actually have the garage door closed if you wish, and the car can be on and there's no um, suicidal behavior in that regard. But then you can get drunk and play video games uh, inside the car, which we've done a good handful of times. A lot of my friends have come over and I'm still sitting in the driveway playing video games in my car when they come on over to hang out. Um, and usually they just hop right in and I give them a controller and they, they add it. So I'll do a quick tour of the Tesla here. So here's the dash steering wheel. Um, looks kind of, you know, a couple of screens here. The screen's pretty massive for the, the dash console. There's, there's only two hard buttons, button right here for your flashers and then a button right here for the glove box. So everything else is controlled on the screen, uh, but they designed some video games specific to Tesla. So you go in here, you go to entertainment, there's all these video games, a lot of them are arcade. But one of my favorite ones is Beach Buggy, which is basically a version of uh, Mario Kart. So let's uh, have a roll. All right, so let me grab my controller here. You just plug in. Um, they made it compatible USB controller, so you can kind of use whatever you want to use. Um, and uh, so then you go on in and we'll, we'll a couple laps. So there's a few guys you can choose. Each person has their own special power. Um, I, I'm i between this uh, bunny named Benny. He throws carrots for his special power. And then Bzorp, we call him Telezorp. Um, and then you can Telezorp past everybody one time. So I'm going to be uh, Bzorp. And then we'll pick our, uh, our favorite track here or one of the tracks. We'll go to Raytona Stadium, and then we'll pick Ludicrous Mode. All right, let's have some fun. Oh, I forgot this is a real tight track. I like some of the straighter tracks here, so I don't run into all the walls. <clears throat> I'm not the best Mario Kart driver. So it took me a lot of practice to get relatively proficient at this beach buggy game, but it uh, turns out I uh, spent so much time on it that I've now unlocked all the levels. And also I have just exploded and went out of bounds. So I've unlocked all the levels at the highest level. So uh, you get all the characters unlocked and all the different tracks unlocked. Somebody just hit me with some sort of a voodoo mask so I can't see shit. Um, turns out I'm still in first because I am addicted to this game, not because I'm a badass. It's not for me to say. All right, here, lap one down. Let's take it home. I'm going to leave him a nice little oil slick here. Uh, somebody's going to hit me with a surprise. Oh, I got chicken faced. Fortunately, I had a, a health I could use on that. If you've never played this game, <clears throat> that chicken face thing is the most annoying thing because you can't see anything. And it's... Oh, I just did it to myself, apparently, and then got also exploded. So... I'm kind of holding on to my secret power here in case somebody laughs me or blows me up right before the finish line. All right, cruising on in. Picked up some bullhorns here. You'll hear me moo in a second. And telezorping to the finish line. I don't always get first place, but uh, that's a special treat for you here today. So that's the, uh, the video game that I spend a lot of time, probably too much time playing. And uh, 
I can't get enough. So let's talk about some uh, Amazon drunk purchases. I'm sure that uh, everybody listening has probably participated in some sort of an Amazon drunk purchase because I looked it up and it turns out drunk purchases are a $48 billion industry. And most of those purchases are Amazon. So I'm not the only one, but I do have a lot of time on my hands. And like I said, I have a lot of interests and I get drunk a lot. So um, not only do I like to buy things on Amazon drunk, but my friends have taken it up as a hobby to try and get me to buy things on Amazon. So I looked at my last six months orders. Uh, I have ordered 266 things on my Amazon account. Uh, I don't know if that's a lot, but I feel like it is. We've actually compared with somebody else. We were just randomly uh, drinking at uh, Founders Brewery here in Grand Rapids. And uh, we were comparing who spends more or not spends more, who buys more items on Amazon, more transactions. So we looked at, uh, you can actually pull that report history on a spreadsheet. And you can see your, your transaction history. And I just smoked to the person I was talking with. They were saying they buy all sorts of things on Amazon. And, and uh, it turns out I buy a, a heck of a lot more. Not trying to make it a competition, but it turns out I just won. So let's go on in and um, let's talk about some Amazon purchases. So the, uh, the Amazon purchase that uh, I'm going to feature here today goes with a little bit of a story. So I was... I have a lawn tractor to mow my lawn and one of the tires was flat. So I looked up um, how to, uh, there might be a hack where we can put some, put the, the tire back in, put air back in the tire and have it seal up without having to take it to a shop. So what you do is you go on in and look this up on YouTube. You put a ratchet strap around the tire and that helps it seal on the rim, even though it's flat, then it'll tighten it up. And then you put air pressure in it. So I put some air pressure in it. And um, there's not a lot of PSIs you need on a small tractor tire, which I wasn't even thinking about. It's only about 14 PSIs. So I got, I ended, accidentally ended up pumping all the way to 14 PSIs. Um, and then I was, I was supposed to do a partial pump till it sealed and then take it off and then um, pump it the rest of the way. So I released the ratchet strap when it was full 14 PSIs and all that air pressure just shot the ratchet strap um, off of the tire as soon as I, I hit the release button. And it smoked my finger. That's why you saw my Band-Aid here. Smoked my finger uh, with a dull edge of the ratchet strap. I mean, there's nothing sharp on the ratchet strap. So it's just a, a dull, flat piece of metal. Pinched my skin against my bone. I was lucky my finger didn't break or chip on the bone. But it, but it went right to the bone. And I, it happened so quick. And I was looking at it just bleeding all over the place. And I said, you know what? I bet you I'm going to need stitches. So then... Uh, if we backtrack, I've over the last five years, I've been averaging stitches about every year and a half, um, finger, lip, finger. And so I, at the last trip, I kind of geared up. So we got our hands on, uh, some lidocaine and it turns out, uh, so we were, I was with my friend who took me to, to get stitches. I had gotten stitches in my lip and then in the same trip of getting those stitches out, they put new stitches in my finger. And this was before the one I just did that I, that I told you about. Um, this, I was shucking an oyster and cut it with a knife. Uh, it turns out you can't shuck an oyster with a knife very safely. So also you can't do it drunk. That doesn't help either. So go on in, get my stitches out, get my stitches in, but it took so darn long. Uh, when we were sitting in there about an hour in the waiting room, or not in the waiting room, but actually in the, in the uh, medical room, and so we ended up finding some, my friend found some lidocaine in the cupboards because we were bored going through the cupboards. So I said, you know what? We're doing everybody a favor if we just borrow this because I'm going to probably need it again. So then when I got these stitches here recently, I had this lidocaine. So I, but I got lazy and I didn't get around to getting a sutures kit. So I wanted to be able to do these stitches myself because it's such a hassle going in and waiting and do all the stuff. I've seen it so many times. I've had all this practice of watching people do the stitches on me. Uh, it's not that hard. So I go on in and try and track down some of my doctor friends and I couldn't get anybody who had some some sutures laying around and learned out learned I needed a couple tools like a needle driver to put the needle in and some forceps to tie the stitches off. So I ended up gearing up all of my stitches needs on Amazon. So I had the lidocaine 
And so I bought syringes to inject the lidocaine in my next stitch wound. And I'm pretty darn good at that um, injection thing because um, I've seen it so many times and, and you, you just inject it right inside the wound all the way around and then a little bit outside to make sure it's good and numb and then you're, and then you're good to go. And so I have those syringes. I have rubber gloves. I bought, let me see what else I bought to make sure I, I'm telling you here all about, looks like I bought some, oh yeah, you also need a larger syringe that just, it's not a needle, but it just, it uh, basically pressurizes the water a little bit as you spray your finger to disinfect. So you put, turns out soap and water, I learned, is just as uh, good as the disinfectant as the solution that they use at the urgent care. Um, so I, you're, I'm going to put soap and water in that syringe, you blow it in, you push it and pressurize that water and and uh, spray it inside of the wound. That disinfects, but also blows out <clears throat> any debris that might be in there from the incident. So, so I have that syringe, and then I got a full sutures kit. So the sutures comes with a needle driver, comes with a couple different forceps, comes with uh, several different styles of sutures. Some sutures you will dissolve if you want. You know, if if you're doing surgery, you're getting su sutures inside. Uh, maybe your mouth or inside a, a wound that's going to be sewn back up. Probably won't use those much, but I needed the sutures and, and probably will need the sutures that um, w will actually like hold steady and you cut them out when you're done. Sutures just means basically the sewing thread of the um, in the medical world. So, and then it comes with a needle and uh, and the needle driver. The needle driver is just like a little. Um, you can also use forceps, but it pinches the needle so you can grab it and use that to push the needle through the skin so it doesn't slip out of your fingers if you try to use your fingers. And then I learned how to tie it. It's a pretty fun little trick. Just wrap around a couple times in the forceps and pull it through. Tie it about two, three times on each stitch before you go to the next one. So I've got, I, it also came with a practice kit. So I can actually practice uh, with a skin like slab, uh, slicing and then sewing up the skin like slab just to make sure I get good at it um, or at least show somebody how to do it uh, if they're going to do it for me, but it's really not that hard. So that's what my next, um, I mean, I can't say I'm excited to get stitches next, but I'm definitely prepared um, and I'll be able to take care of that all myself. So that is my drunk Amazon purchase for the day and I uh, hope you enjoyed the show here. We'll be coming at you with a lot more and hopefully some more fun stories to go with them. Thanks for watching.